Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In the video you're about to see, I wanna give a quick disclaimer that I am not a professional repair technician, and I'm gonna try to repair a 35 millimeter F2 lens that had a broken aperture. If you follow these instructions, you're pretty much guaranteed to destroy and break your lens. So if you do that, don't blame me. But if you want the entertainment of uh, watching this video and seeing me try, enjoy. This is the Young No 35 F2 lens. It was one of my very first lenses that I bought off of Amazon because it's a, it's a fairly inexpensive lens. And I had been shooting on this lens probably almost a year before I realized that it was broken. Every now and then I would do an exposure and it would come out very overexposed and I didn't quite understand why I blamed it on myself and I didn't know enough about photography to realize that the lens wasn't functioning properly. It would literally be a year before I would realize that it would be the aperture that was stuck. Now, as you're taking this apart, there are going to be some screws that have glue put in them. So you're going to need to get a razor blade and dig out that glue. And once you get it out, sometimes particularly this one I had to put a lot of force to get that screw to come out but they will come out so you take all those out you can get the back off but you're gonna to need to kind of put it on and hold it on with your hand while you take out the uh, the screws from the front and along the front you're also gonna run into a screw here that has glue in it so get the razor blade out again and pry that glue out and then once you get the front to come loose set it down leaving the front on you're gonna to have to pick the back up and there's a little ribbon connecting the aperture and what you're gonna to have to do is use a special little pen tool to kind of poke through that hole and then you can disconnect it once that's disconnected set the back back on and then you can lift out all the elements from the lens The aperture housing right here is going to have about four screws which connects it to the front elements. So what you're going to do is undo those four screws. And once you get those undone, you will be able to take the back element off the lens and inside of that will be the aperture, which I'm going to show you just in a moment. The aperture will actually snap out. There's a, uh, a few clips holding it in place, so there's no more screws to undo at this point. You just kind of need to loosen the clips and it will slide out. And this is the aperture. It's actually sandwiched together between two pieces of plastic if you want to get into the blades. And once again, it's just a few little clips holding the two pieces of plastic together. And this is the first time I got to see the actual aperture of this lens right here. If you look at the very bottom right there, there's the indication of what had went wrong. Some oil had dripped down into the lens, or the, sorry, the aperture. And the blades were kind of adhering together. And you're going to kind of notice as I'm exploring the aperture, I don't, at this point, I don't realize what's wrong. I thought maybe that just that one blade had come loose. So I was trying to put it back on, but you can see that there's that one section that's just totally soaked in oil.
at this point in the video, I still don't quite know what I'm doing. So here we go. Pay attention, see? Instead, it, it should just fall apart. But instead, it's like all stuck together. So that mechanism right there is the mech mechanism that actu actuates the blades. And it's got a little gear down in there that turns it. In one direction it's going to be all the way open, and the other direction it will be all the way closed. And it'll be pretty obvious when you go to put the blades back on the, uh, when you go to rebuild it, which, which is open and which is closed. But see, notice all that oil. You're going to start looking as I'm putting this back together, you see all the oil will get on the table as an indication as how much oil was down in there. And I'm going to fast forward through this because I actually had to uh, clean the blades and it took me probably about five or six tries to get all the blades on. And I was kind of putting them on in a pattern. But the one thing I didn't notice until after I got the aperture all put back together is that you kind of need to follow a pattern with all these blades so that when you put the final blade on you should I should have I should have tucked this blade down underneath the one in front of it because this is the one that kind of breaks a pattern and so I thought I had it actually put back together and, and putting it back together it actually did work this way and so I sandwiched it back together reassembled the lens and then I tried it. I had no idea if it was going to work or not. But actually cleaning all the oil off the blades did repair it. And this part right here is really tricky. You got to be really careful when you snap this back on because if you if you um, cause the blades to shift out of place, the whole the whole thing's going to fall apart. But the nice thing is, and I didn't realize it, and I'll show you at the end of the video, that the uh, the blade housing is designed with a uh, with a manual thing, so that you can manually operate. Oh, right here, if you look at that white glob there in the lens, I think that's where the oil came from from that dropped down into the aperture housing. So if you take this lens out on a really hot day, it's possible that some of that oil can drip down into your aperture and cause it to kind of freeze up. So I recommend that if you are using this lens to always keep it stored front element down to prevent that oil from dripping back into your apertures. Otherwise, this, this has been a really great lens and I've really enjoyed it. I've since replaced it with the f1.4 version. The Young No lenses, I would actually still recommend them because they, they're very cost effective. And for somebody who's learning photography, they're a really great way to get your hands on a wide aperture lens and start learning more about photography. These lenses so far that I've had from this company or don't make good lenses for doing sports photography because the autofocus is not as fast as some of the more advanced um, Canon mechanisms but right when you go to try to put the uh, the front screws back on I was struggling here because I didn't quite realize what I needed to line up or how I needed things to line up but if you pull the focus ring just apart you'll notice I noticed that there was a little ring underneath that slides and so right there it is and so what you have to do is just slide that ring around until it lines up with the uh, the screw and once you get that to line up you can put the uh, the screws back in the front But like I say, these lenses have been 
great lenses to learn photography and the fact that I was able to take it apart and put it back together and actually fix something on my own I that gave me a great feeling and so here I am testing the aperture and this is the first time that the aperture on this lens has ever worked now you'll you'll notice that the blades are not lining up in any kind of pattern so I later decided that I should probably take it all back apart and so here you can see that when I when I put the last blade on I assembled it so that they all kinda tuck into one another and right there on the right you can see that little slot and one of the little tiny pegs you can use that to manually operate the aperture before you reassemble the camera to make sure everything is working properly. 